Good day everyone. Welcome to the world of physics and today we are going to talk about another important concepts in physics which are very evident in our day-to-day -day activities. Module number three is entitled Momentum and Impulse and the most essential learning competencies are the following. Number one, relate impulse and momentum to collision of objects. Number two, infer that the total momentum before and after collision is equal. These are the expectations. First, state the relationships between momentum and mass and between momentum and velocity of an object. Second, explain the law of conservation of momentum. And third, relate force and time with impulse. These lessons are anchored on the division made module from SDO Kalaokan. In a popular game like basketball, game commentator will always say, that the team has a greater momentum and the players in the said team are performing great, moving fast, and very confident with their decision in the court. That is how we describe momentum in terms of sports. But in science, momentum has its own meaning. So for today, let us know more about momentum, impulse, and law conservation of momentum. In physics, momentum is a quantity used to describe the behavior and quantity of objects in motion. It is affected by mass and velocity of moving objects. Momentum is the difficulty in changing the state of motion of an object. Momentum can also be called as the inertia of motion. Galileo described inertia as the tendency of an object to maintain its current state of motion. If it is at rest, it will remain at rest. And if it is in motion, it will remain in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So momentum is the measure on how difficult to change the initial state of motion of an object, whether at rest or in motion. Momentum is also the product of mass and velocity. It means that it is affected by mass and velocity of an object. The heavier the object is, the greater its momentum. And the faster the object moves, the greater its momentum. Momentum can be computed by multiplying the mass and velocity of an object. In symbol, it will look like this. P is equals to M times V. P stands for momentum. M is the symbol for mass and V refers to velocity. The unit to describe momentum is kilogram meter per second. Kilogram is the unit for mass and meter per second is the unit for velocity. Let us elaborate more. Mass is a quantity that can describe the amount of momentum present in an object. In science, mass is directly proportional to momentum. It means that as the mass increases, the momentum also increases, provided that the object is moving. And as the mass decreases, the momentum also decreases. Likewise, the greater the mass, the greater the momentum of a moving object. And the lesser the mass, the lesser the momentum of a moving object. So mass will definitely affect the momentum of an object in motion. So when the object is moving, heavy objects has a greater momentum than lighter one. For example, a moving truck versus moving bicycle. If the truck and bike has the same velocity, the truck would probably have greater momentum compared to bike because it is heavier than the bicycle. But if the bike is moving fast than the truck, then there will be a chance that the bike would have a greater momentum, but it should be computed for greater accuracy. Likewise, velocity is another factor to be considered in measuring the amount of momentum in an object. Momentum in science refers to the rate of change of the position of an object with respect to the frame of reference. Last time we discussed velocity as the description on how far an object moves and in what particular direction. So in physics, velocity is directly proportional to momentum. This concept explains that as the velocity increases, the momentum also increases. And as the velocity decreases, momentum also decreases. So velocity will definitely affect the momentum of an object. Because the greater the velocity, the greater the momentum of an object. And the lesser the velocity, the lesser the momentum of an object. For example, 
two cars have the same mass, car A and car B. Even if their mass is the same, they are moving in different velocities. Car A is moving at 30 km per hour while car B is moving at 40 km per hour. Since car B is moving faster than the car A, we can say that car B has a greater momentum than car A. So looking at their velocity, you can see that car B has a greater velocity than car A. So having greater velocity, meaning having greater momentum, since their mass is similar. Let us practice more. I will show you some examples and let us see which of the following vehicles or objects has the greater momentum and why. Number one is sleeping giraffe and flying insect. So what do you think? Between the two here, which of the two has the greater momentum? So in number one, we can see that giraffe is sleeping while the insect is moving. So meaning, Giraffe has no velocity since it is not moving, while insect has velocity since it is moving. So, knowing that momentum is equal to the product of mass and velocity, you have to consider the mass and the velocity of a given object. So, in this example, we can say that the insect has a greater momentum compared to giraffe, even if the giraffe as a greater mass or heavier compared to the insect, it is not moving, so it has no velocity. While the insect, even if it is lighter and smaller compared to giraffe, it is moving, so it has velocity. So it has a greater momentum compared to giraffe. Number two, train moving at 380 km per hour and a bus moving at 45 km per hour. So in this example, it is very clear that the train has a greater mass and moving so fast compared to the bus. So meaning to say it has a greater momentum, it has a greater mass, and it has a greater velocity. So in this example, in this number two, train has a greater momentum than the bus. Three, tricycle moving at 20 km per hour and stationary track. So between the two, which do you think has the greater momentum? So the truck here is not moving, therefore it has no velocity. While the tricycle is lesser or smaller and lighter compared to the truck, but it is moving at 20 km per hour. Therefore, tricycle has velocity. So even if the truck is heavier compared to tricycle, since it is not moving, it has no velocity. So, it has no momentum. So, number three answer will look like this. Tricycle has a greater momentum compared to the truck simply because of the velocity of the tricycle. Last one, motorcycle and car park in the parking area. When I say park, they are not moving. So, motorcycle and car has no movement. Therefore, motorcycle and car has no velocity. So, regardless of their mass, motorcycle has no momentum, car has no momentum, simply because they do not have velocity. So, just take note that mass and velocity are the two factors that can affect the momentum of an object. And if the object is not moving, there is no momentum, meaning momentum can only be present if there is motion. And momentum is the product of mass and velocity. And take note that momentum is a vector quantity. When I say vector, those are the quantities that have magnitude and direction. So momentum has direction also. So let us apply now the formula in getting the momentum of a given object. So let me read the problem here. What is the momentum of a 600 kilogram car moving at 20 meter per second to the north? So, in solving this problem, there are ways to answer this. First thing to do is to identify the given. And in this problem, the given are the following. The mass of the car, which is 600 kilogram, and the velocity, which is 20 meter per second to the north. 
So since momentum is a vector quantity, you have to identify the magnitude, which is 20 meter per second, and the direction, which is going to the north. After writing down the given, you have to jot down what is asked, or what is, what are the things we are looking for. So in this example, in this sample problem, we have to find out the momentum of the car. And to solve for the momentum, you have to look for the proper formula. So the formula to be used is this, mass times velocity. After identifying the formula, you can now substitute the value. So mass is equal to 600 and velocity is equal to 20 meter per second. So multiply now 600 and 20. So multiplying the two will equal to 12,000. So the unit is kilogram meter per second. Kilogram is the unit for mass and meter per second is the unit for velocity. And since momentum is a vector, you have to specify the direction which is going to the north. Change in momentum will happen if there is a change in velocity. For example, a motorcycle moving at 20 meter per second increases its speed to 30 meter per second. So the mass of the motorcycle stays the same, but the velocity changes from 20 meter to 30 meter per second. Therefore, there is a change in momentum. Again, if there is a change in velocity like this, 20 to 30 meter per second, there is a change in momentum of the motorcycle. So we can express this change in momentum in an equation. This is the equation for initial momentum. P sub i is equals to mv sub i. P sub i refers to initial momentum while m stands for mass and v sub i is the symbol for initial velocity. When you say initial momentum, this is the starting value of momentum when the velocity is not yet changed. But if the velocity changes, then there will be a change in momentum. And that is what we call final momentum, which is expressed in this equation. P sub f is equals to mv sub f. P sub f refers to final momentum, m pertains to mass, and b sub f is the symbol for final velocity. And to calculate the change of momentum or the change in momentum, this is the formula that you are going to use. Change in momentum is equals to final momentum minus initial momentum. So the triangle here refers to change and P stands for momentum and F and I, F for final, I for initial. So, P is the symbol for momentum. On another way around, you can have an, an equation like this for change in momentum. Change in momentum is equals to mv sub f minus mv sub i. v sub f is the final velocity. v sub i is the initial velocity. So, momentum can also be conserved if the net external force acting on the object is zero. Whenever there is collision between two objects, the forces acting on the colliding objects are equal in magnitude but in different direction. Actually, there are three types of collision, like elastic collision, wherein two objects move separately after collision. Another one is the inelastic collision, wherein the total momentum is conserved but the total kinetic energy decreases after collision. And the last one is the perfectly in elastic collision or in objects stick together after collision. But in any, type, in any type of collision, the total momentum remains constant. That is what we call law of conservation of momentum, which states that the total momentum of a system remains the same if there are no external forces acting on it. Therefore, momentum can neither be created nor destroyed. It is just transferred to another object or changed in direction. Another term connected to momentum is impulse. Impulse is the product of force and the time it takes for the force to be applied. The formula is this. Force times time is equals to impulse. So impulse in momentum 
are connected with one another. If you want to change the momentum, we should apply a large amount of force in short duration of time. Or you should apply small amount of force for a long period of time. Momentum, impulse, and law conservation of momentum are all important concepts in people's lives, most significantly on the road. To avoid injuries and accident, certain concepts of impulse must be applied. Actually, the use of airbags in the car is made through the use of impulse and momentum concepts. If ever there's a road accident, the driver would tend to move forward into the steering wheel, and airbags can help because there will be a smaller force applied over a long duration of time to change the momentum of the driver. Therefore, reduce the injuries and that is one of the many applications of physics in reality. That's conclude our lesson for today. I hope this lesson is clear to you. But if ever you have some concerns or clarification, just message me and your questions will be entertained in the morning. Kindly submit your science activities like your module, performance tasks, and quiz on or before the deadline. That's all for today. Stay safe and have a nice day.